what is up everybody back with another video today uh finally little blue is on the ground she's freshly on the ground not completely finished but i've been driving her on the road here and there just needed to button up a couple little things but she's basically done so with that being said today's video is going to be a basic how to bag the back half of your nissan or mini truck Full-size truck's pretty similar as well. Um, first off, I'm gonna say, don't just follow off this video. Please, if you're planning on bagging your truck, do some research, Google, other YouTube videos, magazines. Do some research, please. <clears throat> I'm still learning things every day. Um, I know a basic knowledge of how a four-link is supposed to be built, but Please do some uh, research before you jump into bagging your truck, please, because I've seen some really scary systems out there and I don't want you guys to injure yourselves or possibly die. But with that being said, we're going to take you through the basics of how to bag the rear of your truck. The way I did it is I kept the fuel, fuel tank in the proximate stock location because A, I didn't want to move it. Uh, high pressure fuel line is very expensive and moving it to the back there's a return and feed line so there's about an extra 15 or 20 feet of fuel line you need to get and then you have to lengthen your harness and a bunch of other stuff so I decided just to raise the tank up so it's about an inch off the ground when the frames laying on the ground um, but if you're really going to be able to knuck knuckle down and get a whole truck done I recommend moving your fuel tank or getting a fuel cell so you can build a proper four link. I did a four link with a wishbone on top. Um, a lot of people do it. I'm still during the testing phase, see how it's handling. It's handling good so far. I need to get a muffler on before I can really start uh, testing the limits of this truck. But it seems to be working so far. Uh, we are running a bag on axle setup, so that's what you're going to see on this. But same kind of principles go for a bag on bar setup. If you don't know what that is, look up some pictures so you know what I'm talking about. Purple Crush is actually on the bag on bar. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna stop talking here. You're gonna hear me talk a bunch more in a second, but hope you enjoyed this video as always. Thank you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, and uh, enjoy. First off, we're going to need to remove the gas fill. So three little bolts and push it through. After that, I always like to take the tailgate off. If you don't know how to do it, this is how. Open your tailgate up. Grab one of your hinges, lift the tailgate up slightly and open it the opposite direction. Then the slotted hole can be pushed out like that. And then repeat on the other side. Once you have that, there's a slotted hole on one side and a regular hole on the other side. You're going to pull the tailgate out through the slotted hole first and then you can pull it out through the solid side. Super easy. Move it off to the side, less weight, less hassle. Now that we're doing that, we're going to unplug all the plugs. Now there's one, two, three plugs under the back. Um, one that goes to the taillights and two that go to your license plate light. We're gonna get under there with some pliers. It can get a little dirty, just forewarning. Uh, a lot of these plugs like to get sticky on you, so make sure to bring some pliers. Now it's time to unbolt the actual bed. There are six bed bolts under the hard body bed and you will need an extension most likely. Here are the locations. One there, one there in the very back and then about a foot in front of those there's another bolt on the left and right. Okay, so four in the back and then there's gonna be two up front, one in the front left corner and one in the front right corner. Do you know that the bed bolts can slip around? I will show you one in just a minute to explain what I'm talking about. So you may need to put a wrench on top of your bed bolt. So we're gonna get underneath the bed and start unbolting the bed bolts. This is a dirty job, try to get your truck fairly high, I have it on blocks. Since I'm lowered, that way I can get to the bolts a little bit easier. If you have a lift, that would be ideal, but this is what we have to work with. Now here is a bed bolt, about to show you. Um, it's got a flat plate 
that keeps it in this channel. And it's supposed to help prevent, prevent it from turning. But what I found out in one of my bed bolts is the bolt that's pressed into this steel piece actually became loose. It unstuck and the bolt was just spinning inside of this steel plate. So you gotta check for this. Make sure you're actually loosening the bolt and not just turning it. Otherwise you'll be sitting there all day not unbolting anything. So now we got our cherry picker. We got a custom extension. Do not use this extension with weight. Uh, this is a bed, so it's pretty light, so we're, it's okay to use the extension. Made up a quick little uh, conduit thing, I could say. Uh, you can make one out of wood or whatnot. There's something quick I whipped up uh, to be able to lift the bed off by myself. So we're gonna set the camera up here on the tripod and just slowly start to raise the bed up. As you're doing this, you want to check for clearances underneath the bed to see if you missed anything. So take this slow. No need to rush things. Now I do want to note, uh, eventually when I put the bed back on, I used clamps to hold the bed lift in place without slipping around. Now once I got to this point, I realized I left a ground strap attached. So we had to undo that ground strap and then we were able to lift up the bed completely and pull it out of the way and get the truck back off the blocks. So now that the bed is off, um, I'm going to remove the old tire, spare tire locator. I didn't do this in the beginning, as you'll be able to tell, but you'll want to remove your fuel tank even if you're going to keep it in the stock location. So undo your fuel lines and you're going to want to stick something in them. I just used a spare bolt and tighten the fittings back up so it doesn't leak. Also you're going to want to put some tape or some plugs. I didn't have any plugs, uh, but you're going to put some plugs on the actual fittings on the tank itself. Now we're going to take off the filler. There's the the breather or I don't know what you call those, the purge line. And these could be stiff so I like to use some vice grips or channel locks to help loosen it up and pull it off. And then we're just going to, I like to twist these kind of rubber hoses. It helps pull them off. You're going to cover that, that big giant uh, intake, or not intake, but the where the fuel comes in and we're going to leave that vent open because you need to let your tank vent and now we're just going to take a jack and unbolt it from everywhere and get it out of the way had to do some finessing with the rear end since i was already halfway into the build but get it out that way we don't blow ourselves up when we start welding on the truck the first thing to do when you're doing your bag job before removing leaf springs or anything i like to take some old u-bolts and we're going to tack these U-bolts to the frame around the axle. Why we do this is we don't want our axle going forward or backward. Uh, we want that axle to stay centered right where it's supposed to be. So you want to tack some U-bolts, make sure the tacks are good and they're going to hold. And we're going to do this on each side. So passenger and drivers, make sure this axle stays centered. Once we get this axle into place, we can remove our leaf springs, not pictured here. Uh, and after I did that, I designed up some hangers to weld to the leaf springs, where the leaf springs mounted. Make sure it's all parallel. I'm going to be using the factory front hanger for the leaf springs to mount my new link bar, because we're going to be starting to build the lower links first. Now rule of thumb for your lower bar, uh, you want to have it parallel to the ground at ride height. That's the best rule of thumb, so figure out where you're going to want to ride at. I like to ride pretty slammed, so I had the axle pretty high up, and that's why the hanger is fairly low. Two inch quarter wall DOM tubing for the actual bushing. 
All right, now you see me drilling into some inch and a quarter quarter wall DOM tubing. It's important to use DOM tubing because it's very strong. There's no seams. DOM means drawn over mandrel. So the metal was literally forced into a tube shape and not seam welded. So we're going to be drilling and tapping the lower link bars. We will also drill and tap the upper link bars. Now you want to take everything slow and make sure to use lots of cutting fluid. Even when you're tapping, this is sped up obviously, but this took about 10 minutes per link bar. You want to make sure that tap is clean, so you might need to twist it out occasionally. If you need any more advice on tapping something, um, just Google it or YouTube it, get some more answers there. But I'm using a 1 inch by 14 tap, and the drill size I used was 15 16 which was the appropriate drill size for the size tap I needed. Now these are some AVS adjustable link-ins and you can see this uh, lock nut. Make sure if you're running adjustable link-ins you have a lock nut on there to keep your link-in in place. So we're just checking out, make sure it's threading in and it's working out great. Next we're going to put the bushing on the other side and these are going to be non-adjustable. So we're going to cope the tubing by hand with a flap disc. It's a great way to do it. It's simple. And I got a level here, a digital level that I can make sure that the bushing is perpendicular with the link bar and I can tack it up and then we're going to take it over to the bench and weld her solid. Now of course I did make sure the bars were the correct length before welding them fully. So make sure that you got that all right. So we're going to weld them all up. These are the lower link bars. Make sure when you design your link bar length to have your adjustable link end at mid, at mid adjustment. That way you can adjust it in or out. You don't want to be too far one direction or the other. So now you see me drilling the bushing. Make sure to use some fluids, but we are drilling for a Zert fitting. If you don't know what Zert fitting is, it's a little fitting that you put attach your grease gun and that way you can grease your Lincolns. I really recommend doing this or getting bushings that already have this feature, but we're doing it by hand. So there's our little Zert fitting. I'm gonna check, make sure our tap worked good. Thread her in there and it looks like she's gonna work good. That way we have a nice place to grease up our bushings. Last a long time. All right, now we're working on the front uh, hanger, tower, I don't know what you want to call this. This is going to be the front mount for our wishbone, our upper wishbone. Now, I designed everything beforehand. You want to have what's called an instant center on a four link. Now, an instant center, your top bar most likely dives down a little bit. And at one point, your bars, if there was an imaginary line, will meet up together. I'll throw a little diagram in. So you know what I'm saying, but I already designed that into the fact. So we're going to get this all welded into place. Now what we're doing is we're putting in our custom upper link tab slash bag bracket. Uh, this is basically a bag on axle setup. I just have it a little bit further behind because I'm keeping the stock fuel tank so we needed the bag away from the fuel tank because it's very close making sure that the bracket is parallel with the frame using that digital angle finder once we are like where we have it we're going to weld it all up make sure there's bag clearance to the frame so it's not going to rub on your frame actually was able to avoid messing with the brakes in the back. So I cut off the tabs being very careful not to cut the lines and then I just uh, bent the lines to where I wanted them and then welded in some new tabs uh, to where the brake line is going to work. So you need to make sure that flexible line is going to be able to travel the full length of your air system. So now we're going to bear the axle to get our next bag bracket welded into place. A good thing to have for an upper link is 
you need to have, as a rule of thumb, 40 degrees of angle. That's going to keep your axle from going side to side. Uh, if you're running a parallel link bar system, you need to have a panhard bar or a Watts link. You can look into that. But we were building wishbone, uh, so I tried to put as much, as much angle on the bar as I could. So I brought it as far over as I could, and that should keep our axle fairly well centered. And I didn't record that. Pinion angle is very important, especially if you're not going to put in any adjustable link-ins. Although I really recommend adjustable link-ins. That way you can adjust your pinion angle and to make sure if your axle is a little bit off, you can uh, bring it forward or bring it back. So that's what's great about the adjustable link-ins and the ability to adjust your pinion angle. I've been told to run your pinion angle zero degrees at ride height. You may have heard different or whatnot. Uh, so do some research, but I put my pinion angles at zero degrees at ride height and have not had a problem with that. Now we got our eight piece C notch kit from roadiefabrication.com and we're gonna take the side pieces first and get them level with the frame. Now I take my adjustable digital level and I check it on the bed mounts, the front bed mounts to make sure I'm level with the truck and then we can make sure our C-notch is going to be level so it doesn't look all crooked. Once we like where it's at, we're going to tack it in place. Never fully weld something. You may need to change it and you don't want to try to cut off all those welds. So once we've got one side on, we're going to grab our other side and we're going to repeat the process. We're going to measure, measure, and measure. Check our angles, check our levelness in both directions. See here, taking lots of measurements. Want to make sure these are in nice and straight and square. It's always helpful to have some clamps. So once I'm happy with it, I'm going to, again, tack it into place. And we'll double check before we fully weld it. But once we got the sides in, we're going to mark the top where we need to cut it. Because it's cut to your custom length. So once we cut that, we can weld the top in so it completes the top part. And now, this may seem weird to you guys, but you need to weld in the sides and top of your C-notch first before you cut your frame. That way your frame stays in the exact same location. You just now have the opening, your C-notch, to allow your axle to travel upward. So once I got that in, I began to measure up the lower part of the, or the C-notch, or the cap after I cut it out. Once we got it cut, I'm going to start welding her in. Once it's all welded up, this should be stronger than even the original frame. Because the original frame is mostly a C-notch, or not C-notch, C-channel, made from what appears to be around 8th inch steel. We're using 316 steel, and it's fully boxed around the C-notch. My upper bag brackets are already welded into place. So figure out where your drop's gonna be, full max drop, and then you can set your bag at max squish, and that way you get your full travel out of your bag. So now we're gonna cut some custom brackets to make our air tank mount. We're just going to temporarily bolt it to our air tank because we're going to be welding these to a 1.5 inch steel tube. So we'll get these snugged onto the tank so we know it's going to fit perfect. And I'll take a spare piece of 1.5 inch tube to make sure it's square and working good. So let's get this other bolt in here. 
Now at this point, I'm not showing all the details because at this point, I want you guys to take your artistic ability and design what you think will work great. As a good rule of thumb, you want your compressors parallel to the ground, up and down. That's how they're designed to work. If you put them upside down, sideways, they're not gonna work as good. They're gonna die out sooner. You'll need to rebuild them or buy new ones. So I recommend keeping them straight up and down, out of the elements if you can. Mine will be underneath the bed, so they'll be kind of out of the elements. But as you can see, I'm just fitting up to this 1.5 inch bar. And once we're all good, we're gonna snug them down and take the tank over to the actual cross member on the frame. Now I made the frame cross member a bolt-in cross member so it's super easy to take in and out and paint. And I already had to use it once and it's a great feature to have. You can take it out as one unit and whatnot. So now we're gonna mark on the frame, center, center of our cross member, do some math, figure out where each side needs to go, mark it. And I want everything to fit underneath the factory bed in the back. There will be a hump in the middle of the floor, but I want everything else to fit under the bed. So we're gonna take a level across the frame, make sure we're under the frame, tack it into place. We're gonna double check some measurements here in a little bit, make sure everything's nice and where it should be. Now we're on to the bed. Once we got all that done and painted, it's time to hump the bed floor. Now you can do different ways. You can leave this open, put it in round tubs, square tubs, cut your whole bed, raise the whole bed floor. You can do at this point anything you want and I want you guys to do what you guys like. I don't want you guys to copy me just because I do it. So Google some pics, see what you need, see what you want. My trucks can be kind of a work truck, so I wanted to keep it simple, just with a hump in the floor. Uh, thinking about it now, I think it would have been cool to raise the whole entire bed floor. That is also quite a bit of work. This was even quite a bit of work, just raising this. But I'm just going to cut everything out, front and back. Now I am using a death wheel. I don't like to use a death wheel, but it gets the job done quick. Boom. Center's cut out. To finish up bagging the rear of your truck or bagging a truck all together, it's a lot of work, it takes a lot of motivation, and it takes a lot of designing and patience. It took me about two weeks to get the back and air management finished up. Uh, a full, full blown shop could obviously do it probably within a week if I had a guess, and a more inexperienced person is going to take a month or two months. I remember when we first bagged the rear of my Purple Crush, well, it's not Purple Crush, but back in the day, it took, let's see, I believe it took about a month and a half to two months just to do the back and then another month to do the front. Now that I'm experienced, it took me a weekend to do the front and two weeks to do the back and air management. So a uh, little under a a little under a month. Uh, I will also be coming out with a video on the basics of an air system, like the air system itself, switches, wiring, and uh, the components you'll need. Last thing is, if you've seen anything in this video that you may want or need or something custom built, hit me up at blazingcustoms at hotmail.com or check out my website, roadiefabrication.com. Uh, we got some of the products actually listed that I used on the website right now, so you can check those out as, long, as well with other products, and uh, we do custom orders as well. So keep us in mind. This helps the YouTube channel grow and helps my trucks grow.
gonna do it for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's been a long wait, uh, but now that little blue is pretty much buttoned up, gonna get Purple Crush back in the shop soon, starting to work on her, and make this my main goal. So, like always, said it before, say it again. Thank you guys, as always, for liking, commenting, subscribing. Uh, if you wanna share, that'd be awesome. And other than that, uh, yeah, yeah, what, man? Keep on trucking, peace.